All right, y'all, what's up? Let's get it started. Let's get it started. I got to talk super fast. If y'all been on my Twitter page, y'all know I've been having technical difficulties out the ass. My PC is crashing. Um, and I think it has a lot to do with I still have Vista on that computer. And a lot of the support is no longer there because Microsoft is like, screw you if you got Vista. Um, but my computer uh, can't be upgraded to 10. But I'm having a hard time finding a 7 or 8, you know, whatever. Okay, my laptop keeps freezing on me. Like every 3-4 minutes, it freezes. So I haven't been able to record a video. Or if I had one recorded, which I did, I went to go see the movie Slight and I recorded that video. I couldn't upload it because the damn laptop kept freezing. And the software that I use is on the laptop, not on the PC, because the PC has the old software on it, okay? So, on top of that, my cell phone was not picking up sound. So, right now I'm on my old cell phone, which can only be turned on if it's plugged up, but it doesn't hold the charge long. So, now y'all got that whole explanation. Let's try to get through these reviews. All right, so, Real Housewives of Pot Potomac. I think it was called Kick That Trick Out. I don't know if that was the real name or not, but that's the one I got. So, let's see. <laughs> I can't edit these videos, y'all. So, you're going to have some ums. You're going to have me look it down. I apologize. Um, Monique starts off at the beginning of the show. I was confused. Her and Giselle is in the kitchen. And Gigi is confronting um, Giselle. And looks like Giselle's old friend, Cal, the one who got kicked out of Sharice's house in season one. It looks like she's confronting them about talking behind Monique's back or about whispering about some rumors. And the Monique's come in and check them. And her and Giselle have a heated exchange of words. And basically she tells Giselle to get the hell out. And she says she don't even know how the hell that started, where it came from. Okay, I'm like, did I miss the episode? I paused and everything, trying to go back and figure out where the hell this come from. Then I realized it was a flashback. Don't do flashbacks on reality TV shows. This is not a TV. This is not a... A TV series, like, you know, sh shots fired a drama. It's not a dramatic series. It's not a damn movie. It's not a book. Don't do no damn flashbacks in a reality TV show because that ain't how that shit works. Okay, but anyway, let's go forward with it. So it goes back now. Uh, Monique is deciding to plan a spades party. You know I love me some, some spades. So um, she's out buying new shit. I don't get that. Um... You want to invite these people over so you can host a nice little party, but then you got to buy all new stuff in your backyard just to throw this little spades party. Um, she says really a, not a backyard party. It's a side yard party. <laughs> and um, they go back to a flashback where Giselle said that she didn't know how to play spades. She's like, what black people don't know how to play spades? There's a lot of black people that don't know how to play spades, baby. My daughter being one of them. The buck stopped with me. Pow! And then I know so many damn versions of it being in the military. Joker, Joker, Deuce, Joker, just Ace, no pass. Oh, we got it all. Bow, bow. I love, bow. I love slapping it down or just cutting the damn dick. Okay, so anyway, uh, so she's planning this function. She's with her cousin Hank. He's like her cousin slash assistant, and she's kind of pretty much updating him on who the women are who are going to be there, right? But the way she's doing it, she's making it seem like. He got a chance with them or something. Okay, my homegirl, Sharice, you would like her because she got big boobs, but, you know, she is still married. You don't know how to handle a married girl. This is how you brief them? And then he, she goes on telling how Sharice ain't had sex in two years. This is the information you want to pass on to your cousin? Why? Unless you're trying to do him a hookup for some reason. And he talking about what he'll do and how he know how to talk to married women as if he's done this before, as if he's proud of that fact. But, okay, let's move on. Then she goes on to say... Um, Talks about Robin. Robin is cool but neutral. Um, Ashley's 27. Uh, she's married to a dude like 30 years her age difference. Um, what does she say? Then Giselle. Giselle is like the bitch pretty much, you know. And they go in about how Giselle try to read her about her four homes. And he was like, you know, check her. If you check her, I got your back, whatever. First of all, I thought this dude was gay. But the way they made it seem like if he was like, like I said, if he had a chance. But did you see him? Hank ain't got no chance with none of these women. None of them. I don't think she mentioned Karen. Mm, okay, yeah. But needless to say, everybody that you mentioned, 
had somebody in some sort of way. Robin technically is the only one that is single, but she's living with one. Sharice is going through a divorce. Giselle has a boyfriend. Ashley is married. So why are you briefing this dude on all the relationship statuses? I didn't get that. Okay, so... Sharice. Sharice is planning her big event. Uh, she's with the NBWA, the National Basketball Women's Association. She's been... Uh, with the organization for 19 years, she's the interim president right now, and she thinks that she needs to separate her life from everything that's basketball, and starting with this organization. This uh, is normally for wives uh, or of current or retired players, since so she's going to be no longer a wife. She thinks it's best for her to um, step aside, and she wants to get the organization started off on a good foot. So she says she's going to plan this big event. Um, she wants the chick Amber, whose house she's holding it at to basically tap all these people for their um, organizations and foundations that they have um, because she wants to rebrand herself so she needs to re-network because everything that she's done right now has been under the guise of being Eddie Jordan's wife so she wants to rebrand herself as just Sharice Jackson and so she needs to make her own contact so she's tapping in to those resources okay well doing her speech though she got a little personal she started telling people how she you know, she's about to drop her last name some of these people probably don't even know you for real for real because she said they was amber's rich friends um and yeah she just got a little bit too deep about her own personal life and it looked like to me she's about to have a breakdown it just I didn't know what was going on. I felt kind of bad for the girl. And then the way that the entire audience was looking at her, they was like feeding her like, honey, baby child, what the hell is going on with you right now? Um, Monique and Robin, I guess they didn't want to like embarrass her by stopping her in the middle of their speech. But I don't know. I had I would have had to been Captain Saber Hole or Captain Saber Friend or something. And step up to the side of her and say some words too. Maybe Robin because Robin's a... Well, she's an ex-basketball wife, too. But still, I don't know. That just felt uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable. I don't even like Sharice, and I was uncomfortable for Sharice. I felt bad. Hmm. Well, Robin goes to meet with Ashley over at Oz. Um, like I said, it's still struggling. The manager was like, this is the worst week that we done had. And I think this is a new manager from the last manager they showed last episode. But she said they keep turning over managers. The, rate, the turnover rate is high up in that joint. They ain't making no money. Can't make no money. Can't get no hours. You know what I'm saying? Can't get no tips. So, uh, she comes up there to meet with her. Now, Ashley straight threw some fucking shade in her confession. She said, you know, Robin is doing this to make ends meet. No, this was what Robin was already doing. This was her job. This was her, her bread and butter anyway. So, but she... Now she's just like getting into it a little more, but I don't think it's necessarily to make ends meet. I mean, fuck, working is to make ends meet. That's why the hell you doing this restaurant. Otherwise, y'all would let that bitch flop, let it go if it wasn't to make help make ends meet. But anyway, Robin come gives her some sound advice. You need to change that damn menu. I don't think Michael's gonna go for that, but that's what Robin said. You need to revamp it. You need to host some gigs. You know, too many people up in this doggone area. All these big socialites and. Everybody holding these functions. You got a nice ass space here. Make it an activity room, pretty much. Bring some people in here. We can get um, the DC Pride Fest up in here. Run some naked men through here with some bowls. They talked about the coyote thing, coyote ugly thing last week, but I thought her and Giselle was trying to get some coyotes. And remember, I said that they needed some younger coyotes. Coyotes. They need some coyotes instead of some coyotes. But you know what I'm saying. So, um, yeah. I, they need to come up with something for that restaurant and they do need to revamp it and like I say I don't think Michael's gonna go for that because he's so diehard Australian but like I said she's the one to run this baby he keeps saying it's Ashley's baby so if it's Ashley's baby he shouldn't have that much control over the menu I mean he funded it but still I just got the shower y'all so I'm dripping wet my heart has been a mess it's been raining all week so my afro got like super super kinky and right now, I just got some oil sitting in it right now. I put some, um, what did I put in it? Some olive oil and some carrot oil. So I put in it right now. But my hair is like coming out. It's dry. What happened? Okay, so 
Karen. Karen goes to meet with her mom, uh, her sister Bridget. They are out trying to pick up the birthday cake for their mother. Uh, remember last season, Karen mentioned that her mother had dementia. And right now she's in a lucid state. So they want to celebrate her 70th birthday. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, I thought Karen was close to 60-something, if not over 60-something. So it was very much a shock to me to learn that her mother is just turning 70. Um, and I finally realized what's wrong with the way, when I look at Karen's face, it's always something off-putting about her look to me. It's been a lot of episodes, I'm like, damn, Karen look good. And that's why I focus on the fact that she look good, so good right now, because it's something... Her eyelashes are too heavy. I got a girlfriend like that, too. And she put those eyelashes on. She ain't using individuals. You can clearly tell that. She used that whole one little thing. And it looked like she used the kind that you get peeled off. But her eyelid always sitting like this when she's talking. Karen already got that sleepy eye naturally. You can look at her sister Bridget and tell that because they look so much alike. Karen and Bridget together, baby. <laughs> Bridget is Karen on 10. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I love seeing them interact together. I do like to see, I like that I'm seeing Karen's family this uh, season. It takes her away from a lot of the drama and the bullshit because she looked at real shady Fei Fei last season. I kind of like this, you know, seeing her more interacting with her family members. Get them all paid, Karen. I know what you're doing, baby. I know what you're doing. Um, so, do 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 So, I think I kind of, I'm like going out of order, but like I said, yeah, I ain't really got all this written down for real, for real, but I got some, try to put some notes. So like I said, at, um, the one thing that I noted though, um, at Sharice's event, um, Robin came with Juan and Robin seemed extra happy that Ron was there. She was like, he's stepping up. Like he, we kind of feel like a couple. And I was like, I thought you didn't want to be with him. I mean, I understand. You have a right to be indecisive. You can. But it just don't seem like it should be. I mean, something just don't stay adding up there. It's like he's stringing you along, he's playing for your fool, he taking you he taking your kindness for weakness. That's what he is. He's doing. And he may generally have been your best friend all your life and but there's something that you don't trust above and beyond the cheating he cheated one time it's something more there it gotta be something more there you i know it's something more there as far as love you willing to go you went broke with your husband after your divorce you still holding on after divorce that was one of the best times to separate for real for real cut your losses everything you, you know lost everything build yourself back up from there it's four years later. Y'all still living together, still pretending to y'all kids that y'all husband and wife. Am I the only one that remember that from last season that she said the kids, she didn't want the kids to know? As far as they know that they still think their parents are married? Am, am I the only one that remember that from last season? Okay, but anyway. Okay, but Monique and um, Chris come. Um, Chris, Chris attitude-wise, reminds me of Bob. Just how jokingly he is. Um, from Real Housewives of Atlanta. He, 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 can, he, he can be the life of the party. He can get you laughing and chuckling. He makes you feel real comfortable. He open, easy going with everybody. Monique, sister girl, she's open and easy going with everybody, but I hate to say but. The girl talk too damn much. She talks too much and everything that she says is a boost about her. Our grass got cut today. If she mentioned that the grass got cut, I got out there with that lawnmower. And I did the line so straight, but I got the diamond cut going across the line. Everything she got to mention is just like um, focusing on her accomplishments. And she does it nonstop. It could be from getting the right amount of pepper flakes into the doggone, you know, pot of chili. I got the exact amount. I put 997 in there instead of 998. Y'all don't understand. Monique Samuels did this. That's the type of conversation she has. So that's why it's bragging. I don't know if she does it because she's uncomfortable or insecure around new people or why she does it. 
But, babe, oh, girl, you talk a lot. Dang, do you ever shut it off? Do you ever turn down? Turn down for what? That's that was just that your life motto, Monique. Oh my goodness, girl. It, it's annoying. It's annoying. Giselle just told you in a very negative fashion, but she told you the truth. There wasn't no lie. Okay, um, mm. Giselle goes to meet with her business partners. I forgot last year that she said she was starting a makeup line. Um, I forgot what she said it was gonna be called. All hue, hue, beautiful, hue, you. I don't know. Something about different hues. And when she said that, I was noticing the hue of the women at the table. I don't know. That was just me. Um, but the one chick, I can't remember her name. Oh, I apologize. The one sister that was sitting across from her, she said that they went to college together. And when she met Giselle, Giselle could not stand her off top. And... But Giselle was like the house mother or whatever of the sorority. They had the place go online. You know, she told my new asshole. And I'm like, don't that sound familiar? That's how Giselle is now with everyday people that she meet. When you come into her space or when you come into the same space together, not necessarily her space, she treats you as if you pledge in the line. Is it pledge in the line? I didn't pledge. I didn't, I didn't go to college until I was like in my late 20s. So is it called pledging line? She take, she basically treats you like you're pledging. And, um, until she could, and, they, and they try to break you down, break down your spirit, until you become cool. Her and this girl became best friends. It's not the best method. It's not. But I said that because a lot of people keep saying that she is jealous. She ain't jealous. Now, I do admit, she can't stand the girl. She hate her. She don't like her. I mean, it, but I was talking to uh, Tawana Carr in uh, one of the videos, and I kept saying, I've been there. I've been there, girl. I was I was out with a group of friends. We went to this little venue, and they were introducing me to the uh, the girl who was hosting for the night. And she was Monique, as far as, like, she just kept talking nonstop. But with after about five words out of her mouth, I was my brain was thinking, this girl got on my damn nerves. I instantly took a dislike to her. I didn't know nothing about her. I wasn't jealous of her either, though. I just didn't like her. Like, you can meet, get, get, bring some babies around some adults and let them pull away from them. They ain't jealous of them. They don't like their ass for whatever reason. There's something about them they just don't like. Now, Giselle takes it too far sometimes because Giselle is very honest and she ain't got no fucking filter. I'm, I'm gonna admit that because Giselle is my girl. I still ride for Giselle, but she ain't got no fucking filter and she been shading the fuck out of Monique this season, but I don't think it's jealousy. I really don't. Um, so so Karen goes to the birthday dinner. Um, it's, it's Ray, Raymond, um, Raven, her daughter, Brandon didn't come. Her son. Huh. I wonder why Brandon didn't come. Karen, Karen's sister, and the mother. And I think Karen's sister must have had a baby because there was a baby there. But now that I know that Karen is not as old as I thought she is, then maybe is this, this her little sister? Is it very possible that her little sister could have had a baby? I don't know. But they made they was joking about the fact that uh, Ray is older than her mom. I'm like, is that true? And the mom was like, you remember I used to call you a filthy dog? I used to say you was a pervert and all that other type of stuff. <laughs> it's an old man creeping up here on my dog on daughter. Is Ray really truthfully older than her mama? See, over 71, somebody let me know. Ooh, that make me feel kind of weird. Mm. I don't know how you did it, Karen girl. I don't know how you did it. I honestly can't date anybody older than my baby daddy. And he old to me. We eight years apart in age. Anybody older than him? And if I look at him too long, he got too much. He started getting too much gray. I'd be like, oh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I could look at a guy speckled with gray, and I'd be like, yeah, that's all people look good on him. But I'm not that type of attractive. No, not that. He's old. Raymond is old. Okay. Um. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I'm trying to sing or something while I'm doing this. So I can find my spot. All right, the game night. The game night space. Ba -da, ba -da, ba -da, ba -da. All right, so um, 
Robin and who else is there? Robin and Karen are already there. Robin and Karen are already there sitting outside. Um, Monique is going through the house, getting everything ready. They cooking up a storm. Chris got the grill burning. Monique in the kitchen throwing down. She got, did you see that, that macaroni? Oh, this is why I'm fat now. That macaroni, baby. That looked so good. It was some them, them candy yams. I love me some candy. I got a sweet potato in the refrigerator right now. I need to go make me some candy yams for them all. Mm. Okay, the food look good. So she's getting everything together. Ashley comes through. And they all sitting out there checking it up, checking it up. And Giselle, she comes through. Her and Robin already talked about the fact that she was going to go ahead and come through. She was invited. And she decided to bring Cal instead of Kevin. Like I said, Cal is the guy that was the one with Sharice. Not Sharice. That was with Giselle in season one. That got kicked out of Karen's house. That's him. That's this dude. They come through. Did you see that coat, though? Did you see that coat on Giselle? That bitch was slamming. That bitch was slamming. Speaking of slamming, back when... Uh, Robin went to the, the restaurant to me. Ashley, did you see them motherfucking heels on Robin? Girl, you better work that. You better work that. But yeah, okay, that coat was that coat was slamming. Um, Giselle's her. It still ain't giving me no life. And and Cal is her stylist. He's not doing nothing for me. They got some horrible stylists in Maryland. I'm gonna let you know because Robin's stylist is horrible. Giselle's stylist is horrible. Sharice her been looking good lately though. It been happening. I wonder who she go to. Mm, okay. So, uh, while they're in the kitchen, I don't remember at all what exactly is going on. Monique was making rounds, and so she's being pretty friendly and cordial with everybody, including Giselle. And she gives Cal a hug, and she say hi to um, Giselle, but Giselle don't hug her back. But, you know, shade. That's what that was. So, they go into the kitchen, and she, first Giselle and them go outside, and they speak to everybody else, and they go into the house get some food. But well, they decided to stand in the kitchen. And Monique came in, you know, her regular little chatterbox self. She goes back out for what have you. She asked him about, oh, why they in? So she goes back out for a second. Giselle and Cal go off to the side. And they uh, whispering all this shade to each other. Um... It's fucked up. It was really fucked up because when you in this girl house and you talking shit about her. So her friend Gigi decides to check them on it. She had every fucking right to do so. Monique, her best friend, she decided to check them on it. Cal and Giselle lied. Say, I don't know what he's talking about how beautiful that house was. I was very surprised that Giselle lied. Usually Giselle would just not respond or she will talk around the lie with the, some semi-version of the truth, but you were not complimenting anything in any way. There was not a compliment came out of your mouth. So Monique came back in like, oh, y'all just gonna sit in the house? Y'all soaking up this air conditioning? And Gigi's like, no, we're trying to get an uh, understanding. We're having a conversation of what they whispering about. I'm trying to figure out what exactly they said. They're whispering about you in, in the house. And Monique's like, what you mean whispering about me? What the hell is going on? So again, like I said, they was lying about what was said and Monique was like, you know, you know, not you know for the disrespect my house, you know, something like that. Like so her and Giselle get into a nasty little exchange of words and then Monique was like, you know what? Let me pull the curtain down. My past about to come here and go slap some spades. I don't know if her past is basic skanks. But he could then come slap some spades with us and um I'ma go on take it outside, right? So she goes outside for a minute. Ashley comes in. And Ashley comes in uh, when Robin and them, Robin and Wine come to the party. Monique come in and like, hey, what's up? I didn't know y'all was going to be here. Gave me all the hugs and daps or whatever. And she, wait a minute, so I missed something. So Robin wasn't already sitting outside. Huh. Robin was sitting outside, so I don't know who was sitting outside early. But Robin and Juan came in, and she get them all little depths and everything, and she's uh sends them outside, what have you. And Ashley, after they go outside, mentioned something to Giselle about the fact that she heard rumors about Juan. And everybody, Giselle was like, oh, what rumors? And she said, um, 
you know, that he's been messing around with another girl. She's like, did you tell her that? And she was like, I didn't know how to tell her, so I was coming to you to find out. What should I say? So Monique was like, you know what? <laughs> I ain't finna be in this mess. Let me step outside. So she goes outside, right? She goes outside and uh, Giselle says to Ashley, okay, I had to wait for Miss Little Miss talk too much to leave because I didn't want to have this conversation about my friend and rumors about her relationship in front of people that she don't care about. Okay. Now, Jill had already scoped it out. You know, her assistant, Jill had already scoped it out. She was like, uh, oh, my time is running out. She went up there and told Monique what was going on. Monique came back in and was like, hey, y'all in here talking about me. You didn't even want to be here. You was disrespectful to me. This, that, and other. You can step the fuck up out of my house. Now, I think Monique was very justified in everything she said and did because they had already had exchanging the words that Giselle was in here talking about her. So when she heard that they still in here popping off at the mouth, she came back in and was like, hey, y'all need to step the fuck up out of my house, right? Okay, but the part that, I, that got me and disturbed me about this was the fact that in this moment, I really think Giselle was right to not discuss it in front of Monique. But Ashley should have been the one to come in and say, I'm sorry, I'm... I don't, mean, I don't want you to take it the wrong way. We was having a little personal discussion. This had absolutely nothing to do with you, I assure you. I don't want it to come off that way. Ashley should have stepped in. Okay, anyway. Uh, but, you know. Okay, so anyway, uh, Cherie shows up at the party, and she breaks down, and she's crying before she even come in the building. It was so, uh, like I said, I thought she was going through a nervous breakdown. My camera is about to cut off, so I'm going to keep talking as much as possible. If I don't get, get it finished, Thank y'all for coming back. Peace. But, yeah, I think that was it. That was it. Right, Monique came outside and was like, hey, what the heck is going on? And they tried to say, oh, we're just here to welcome Miss Sharice in. And she's like, no. Nah, y'all, I ain't been down for that BS. What's really going on? What's really the deal? Why everybody out here for real? Let's talk about it. So, uh, yeah, that was pretty much it. That's the way it ended. I think it's going to go a couple of ways. Um. Because Robin already addressed Ashley. Why the hell is she bringing up Juan? You know, she was bringing that. She was addressing that as Monique walked up. I said, Sharice is having this breakdown. But I think there's going to be an issue with Sharice and Gigi. Because remember, Gigi said that she knew Eddie a little bit more on the personal side. And I think this is going to come about at this party, which is not going to be good in this state of mind that Sharice is in. All right, y'all. That's it. That's Real Housewives of Potomac. Hopefully, I can get this loaded from my phone. From, my, from this phone, it may take forever. But I'm going to get this one up. Try to get Rebel up tonight. Peace.